Good evening guys, welcome to this week's episode. So I'll get the usual stuff out of the way first. Obviously you'll probably be listening to some um, lots of different platforms. So if you're listening on YouTube, then please hit like on the video and you know comment, let me know your, your thoughts, let me know where you're watching from, etc. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel too. If you're listening to this as a podcast, then in particular, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, then if you could leave a review, that would be awesome. And obviously, if you're listening on Facebook, don't forget to hit like, um, you know, drop a comment, say hi, let me know where you're from, any thoughts that you have, any questions, they don't have to be related to what I've spoken about. And also, you know, even if you're watching this on the replay, do the same, it doesn't matter. No comment, hashtag replay. It's always cool to see people watching it back. Eh, I think that's it. That's my usual spiel for a start, isn't it? Hi, Katie. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, so pretty much just all, all of the stuff that I've mentioned there, guys, it basically just helps to sort of increase like the exposure of the the podcast or the episode or the platform that you're watching on, basically. It just helps, you know, the reviews, the likes, the comments, the engagement, etc. the shares, don't forget to share it. It just helps the video go out to more people, basically, okay? Which is obviously my goal. So, you know, if you guys can help me out a little bit there, I would greatly appreciate it. Then, Q. So, usual um, sort of format. I'm going to blab about a particular topic and if you have any thoughts, any questions in the meantime, please put them in. And that also goes even if you're not watching this live or if you're, you know, listening to this on, we're watching this on YouTube, still put them in. Still doesn't matter. I'll still see them and I'll still get back to you. So want to talk tonight about sort of the difference between like daily activity and like exercise. Okay. So... <clears throat> I mean, particularly important now, I think, but whenever sort of I see people that are like, right, you know, I'm going to start being more active, which is awesome. They always look at it as, what, what I always tend to see is they're like, oh, well, I'm going to start going to the gym more. I'm going to start doing more gym sessions. I'm going to start doing more cardio. Oh, I just need to hit the treadmill. Things like that, right? Which is great, okay? Now, I want to make the point that I'm not downplaying the importance of these types of exercise, okay? Because they are absolutely important and you should do them. You should really be doing some kind of resistance training two or three times a week. Remember that doesn't have to be at the gym. And you should be doing sort of like 150 minutes of moderate cardio or 75 minutes of sort of vigorous cardio over the spread over the week, okay? They absolutely are important and they should be done, okay? The point that I'm trying to make here is not to focus so much on those that you neglect what you do outside of these sessions, okay? Because the things that you do outside of these sessions from a weight loss perspective are a lot more important, okay? Why? Because they burn more calories, basically, okay? You will burn a higher percent of calories from what you do outside of the gym and your exercise sessions than you will inside them okay, or during them, okay? So, to sort of like break this down, essentially, the amount of calories that we burn in a day is called our TDEE, or our Total Daily Energy Expenditure, okay? Now, our basal metabolic rate compromises the most of this. So, com compromises, comprises. Um, and that can be anywhere, so it's gonna vary between individuals, but I'm just gonna give you like ballpark figures, okay? So like 60 to 80%. Now your BMR is basically all of the energy that your body uses to keep you alive, okay? So this sort of comprises the, the majority of the calories that we burn, okay? Now, on top of this, we also have something called the thermic effect of feeding, okay? And this is basically, the energy that your body uses to break down and absorb food, essentially, okay? And this, this is usually about 10% of the calories that we burn in a day. So this leaves the rest for physical activity, okay? Which can be anywhere from sort of like 20 to 30% of the calories that we burn in a day, okay? And again, this will vary depending on how active you are. You know, you could be at the bottom end of that, you could be at the higher end of that. But the biggest sort of point that I want to make here out of all of this is we can break that physical activity part down into two parts, okay? 
We have exercise activity thermogenesis, which is what it says on the tin. It's the sort of, the calories that we burn doing formal exercise, okay? And then we have something called NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is a real fancy way of saying everything that you do throughout the day that isn't exercise, okay? So it can be anything from like fidgeting and just adjusting your posture to, you know, like walking, the activity that you do at work, all of the movement that you do throughout the day that isn't like going to the gym, doing a run, playing sports, all of that movement, okay? And the biggest point I want to make here is NEAT is, contributes more to the calories that you've been in a day than your exercise, okay? Unless you are like an athlete that is training for four, six hours a day, NEAT will burn more calories in a day than your exercise will, okay? And that kind of makes sense, right? Because let's say that you sleep for eight hours. That leaves 16 hours in the day that you're awake. Let's say that you exercise for an hour. That means there are 15 hours in that day that you can be active, right? Let's break it down in a week. Let's say that you go to the gym an hour a day, five times a week. That means that you are active in formal exercise for five hours a week. Again, take away that hour, take away eight hours of sleep, that's 15 hours a day that you're awake, that you can be active. That's 100, so that's five hours of formal exercise, that's 105 hours a week that you can be active. So the difference there is huge, right? We've got an hour a day versus 15 hours a day. You're obviously probably, you know, you're gonna burn more calories in those 15 hours than you are in that hour, right? It just makes sense. So, and these numbers can be huge, right? I'm talking huge. I mean, on, I mean, the amount of calories that you're going to burn in, the, in, say, like a gym session, for example, it will vary for so many different reasons. But you'll do well to hit three, 400 calories, okay? Very well. When they look at studies and they look at the difference between people who are sedentary in the day, so people who have a sedentary job and a sedentary lifestyle – Compared to people who have a highly active job, you know, they're on their feet a lot, they're moving around a lot throughout the day. The difference in the amount of calories that those people burn can be up to 2,000 calories a day. 2,000, okay? Now, I challenge you to try and burn 2,000 calories a day through exercise. Good luck. You won't do it, okay? So this is the point that I'm trying to make. We always, you know, people are always looking when they're trying to be more active at doing exercise, more exercise, I need to do more exercise, more exercise, more exercise. And again, not downplaying the importance of this. You should absolutely do it. But don't neglect your daily activity that isn't exercise. You're just movement throughout the day because it will burn significantly more calories than your exercise sessions will, okay? Now, just as sort of like a side note here, because I always like to blab on, we know this, right? But it is very important too, is this is a particularly important when we diet and we're trying to lose weight, okay? Long story short, <laughs> which isn't usually my forte, basically when we diet, our, our bodies don't, don't like us losing weight, okay? It's a survival instinct, our bodies don't like us to lose weight. Unfortunately, we can't say, brain, stick it out, you know, we're not gonna die, we're just gonna go on a little bit of a diet. Our brain doesn't see that. Our brain sees losing weight as, you know, starvation essentially. So it's gonna try and prevent this, okay? And there are a few ways in which it does it, but the one that is relevant to us tonight is that it will stop you burning as many calories, okay? So it does it in two ways. The first is it like reduces your metabolic rate, okay? But it's not that significant, okay? There are studies where it will show if you lose 10% of your body weight, it will drop your metabolic rate by about 100 calories. And if you continue to go down to 20% loss of body weight, it doesn't drop any further, okay? So 100 calories, okay, it's not nothing, but it's, you know, it's not significant. And it's definitely not enough to stop um, weight loss, okay? Now, the other way it does it is that it will cause a subconscious drop in this NEAT, okay? So essentially, 
you will just stop moving around as much throughout the day. And again, this can be as subtle as you fidget less. Let's say you're a type of person who does presentations and you're always handsy and you're like, Ugh. you just won't do that as much, okay? But you won't notice it. And that, sorry, I'll get to that point in a minute. But And it could be, you know, if you're the type of person that bounces your knee and sits there fidgeting like me or tapping, your, you know, tapping and stuff, you just won't do that either. And it can be as subtle as that, but it could also be, you know, sort of not as subtle and it can be you know things like you just won't have the drive to move as much or maybe now you're more likely to take the lift than you are the stairs and things like that and it just adds up throughout the day okay and it can add up significantly some studies have shown that it will you know this subconscious drop will sort of re result in you burning 400 calories less a day okay 400 calories significantly more than what our metabolic rate will drop, okay? And the 400 calorie drop in the amount of um, sort of calories that you burn in a day is definitely enough to stop weight loss, okay? And like I just touched on before, the most important thing to remember about this is it's subconscious. You will not be aware that you are moving less, okay? And that's really important to remember because, well, because you won't be aware, essentially. So, you know, you just won't be aware that you have stopped moving around as much and stopped burning as many calories. So, the importance here is that we have to make the conscious decision to move more, okay? And the best way you can kind of do this is really just through activity, but also like walking. So walking contributes the most to what we call NEAT, okay? But also just being active. And because walking contributes the most to NEAT, because you think about all the like, you sort of the steps you do throughout the day, you know, you get out of bed, you walk to the bathroom, you walk to the, you know, you walk downstairs to get your breakfast, you walk back upstairs to get dressed for work, you walk outside to go to your car, you get out of your car, walk in, you know, you're walking in work, blah, 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 blah. You're walking a lot, okay? So the best way to sort of track this is just get a pedometer, okay? Get a pedometer. Most sort of smartphones now have pedometers built into them so they can track your step count. But you can get standard ones. You can get like activity trackers like your Fitbits, etc. Or get a standard old school pedometer and clip it on your hip. And from here, just track how many steps that you do normally and just try and increase it. Just try and get it as high as you can, okay? And you can be really creative about this, okay? I mean, the obvious solution would be go for a walk, right? And let's be honest, that's quite relevant right now, you know? I mean, pretty much the majority of the world is kind of on a bit of a lockdown right now. So, you know, gyms are shut, for example. Where we can go is restricted. I mean, it will depend on where you are. You know, make sure you check government guidelines for where you are. But I know in England right now, you are allowed to go out for a walk around sort of the area that you live in once a day. So use that option, you know. I mean, how nice was the weather today as well? I mean, make the most of that because we have a pretty crap four months, right? So get out and go for a walk. Make the most of that. And even if you can't, to understand that, you know, some people might be watching this in different countries where, you know, you probably can't do that at the moment. But again, you can get really creative with this, you know. Sort of just try and be more active. Just think as much as you can about moving as much as possible where you are. So do some gardening. Do some DIY that you've been putting off for two years because you've never had the time and now you're always at home. You know, instead of sitting down to read a book, can you read a book and just walk back and forth in your garden? Can you stick on a podcast or listen to some music? And rather than lying down, can you just sort of stroll around your garden or, or around your lounge, etc.? You know, what you tend to find, you know, I do it when I'm on the phone. Um, I've sort of like taught myself, rather than sitting there and just sitting on the phone, why not get up and walk around? You don't even realise you're doing it because you're concentrating so much on talking like you would be on reading and listening that you don't even realise you're moving. But again, if you do that for eight, nine hours a day, that adds up, right? You know, and just challenge yourself to be a bit more active. Use a push mower rather than sitting on one. You know, there's so many different things that you can do, even though we're really restricted at the moment. And then... 
you know, just for thinking after this, when this whole restriction is lifted. Again, there's so many ways you can be creative about this. Take the stairs rather than the elevator or the lift. Park at the far end of the car park rather than right outside the door. FYI, bonus, there's always spaces, okay? You never have to fight for a car parking space at the end of the car park. Sort of, if you use public transport, can you get off a stop early and walk? Can you get up and move every five minutes of the hour? You know, there's so many different ways that you can increase your activity throughout the day, okay? And that's all it is, just increasing, just constantly looking for ways to move, however that may be, okay? Just try not to sit still, sort of reduce sitting still time, essentially. And there's loads of different ways you can get creative about that. Hey, Anna. Awesome. Glad you can join us again. Thank you. And nice to hear you'll be watching the replay. Happy Wednesday to you too. And yeah, I think that's it, guys. So I think that's sort of like the main point that I want to make all around, around all of this is whilst exercise is very important, don't neglect what you do outside. And I see this, <laughs> this is something that you kind of see with like, you know, in like personal training sessions, and this isn't me slagging off personal training because I'm on myself, but I was always conscious of this when I did one-to-one, -one, um, which I don't do now, but I feel like a lot of personal trainers feel like they have to beast their clients in order to feel like they've done a good workout, right? But the problem is, if you're, and this, this applies to you as well, if you train yourself, you go to the gym for yourself and you just want to beast yourself in the gym, and you come out of that session, you're absolutely knackered. And because of that, you don't do anything for the rest of the day. And for the next two days, you're so sore, you hardly move. Now, from a weight loss perspective, that you may as well have not done the, that exercise session because you've reduced how much you've moved so much for the rest of that day, the two days after that, that the calories that you've burnt will be a lot less than if you'd never done that exercise session. Okay, so again, not downplaying exercise, just make sure that you're not focusing so much on doing that, that you're neglecting what you do outside of it. Because for 99.9% .9 of people, what you do outside of your exercise sessions will burn significantly more calories than what you do during your exercise sessions, okay? I think that's all I've got to say. As always, guys, if you have any comments, any thoughts, I think that was quite a short one for me. Let me say 17 minutes, yeah. I mean, not short, but short for me. So, yeah, any comments you have, guys, please feel free to share them. Any questions you have don't have to be related to what I've spoken about. Spoken about. And again, even if you're not watching it live, doesn't matter, put them in. I will give people the time it takes for me to do sort of the usual announcements, etc., to put a question in and then we'll call it. So again, as I mentioned at the start, whatever you're listening on, watching on, please find some way of interacting on liking, subscribing, leaving a review. Even if you've already hit like on the Facebook video, it doesn't matter, just press it again if you're watching live. You know, say hi, let me know any thoughts, share it. Again, all it does is just increase the exposure of the episode and whatever platform you're listening on, just so it goes out to more people, which is obviously my goal. And final announcements. I mean, this topic in particular is something that I talk about a lot with my private group because I find it so important. And we cover this in a lot more detail in my private group, the Lean Body Healthy Life Programme. We have, every week, we have, we set ourselves for targets for this sort of thing because it's just so important for weight loss. So we always set our intentions on a Monday and we always say how many steps we're going to do each day because of its importance on weight loss. And we obviously also cover a lot, there's a, a lot of other content on everything you can think of from nutrition, exercise and lifestyle, as well as new recipes are added every single month. I think we have nearly 200 in there now. So plenty of recipes. And if you want to check that out, then there is a link in the description of the post. Also in the description of the post, there is a link to our free Facebook group, where it's basically, I just put all of my stuff in there, all of the content that I have, 
And then Brad also puts all of his stuff in, like his boot camp kind of workouts, etc. And then it's just a place that people can ask any questions that they have if they don't want to ask it live. And we can have kind of discussions on anything and everything. So check that out. And there are also two little freebies in the description of the post. So you've got the, um, the recipe pack, which is basically one of the recipe packs that I share with my clients in the private group. It's got, I think it's got 12 recipes in there. Yeah, I think, I think it's got 12 in there. All of the old ingredients, cooking instructions, color information, etc. And then there's also a free ebook that I did, which basically just gives you sort of the basics on how to get started. So it gives you the basics of nutrition, the basics of exercise, and the basics of like prepping your mindset for almost like a weight loss and sort of weight maintenance mindset and focus okay and again they're all in the description of this post so feel free to um check those out and that's it i think oh last one quickly gonna be doing another live workout tomorrow night so thursday 7 p.m gmt on my facebook profile but i'll do another post about that tomorrow anyway so hopefully see some people there too so thank you very much as always guys for tuning in. I do appreciate it and appreciate an interaction on the posts. Any questions in the meantime, any queries, whatever, email me, nathanbeckhoffnutrition at gmail.com or just send me a private message. I don't care. Happy to answer any questions. So I shall see you soon. Uh, have a good weekend if I don't see you before that and I shall see you next week. Thank you.